You loved him in Community and the Hangover Trilogy, and now the same goes for Dr. Ken Fridays on ABC at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Season 2 is already underway. Thrilled to have Ken Jong on the show. How are you, Ken? Fine, sir. Thank you for having Good me. Good to see you. Good to see you. I left off your Sports Center credit. I should say you're a fellow <laughs> Sports Center anchor. <laughs> I loved seeing you do a guest Sports Center spot a couple. Was that a couple years ago? Yeah, it was a couple years ago. It literally is one of the. It's a career highlight for me because never in a million years I ever thought I would like guest anchor a sports center um, mm -hmm. a show. It was with Lindsay Sarniak and she really guided me through the whole thing. It and was I, Lindsay and Ken an hour? Was it, it was an hour? Lindsay, it, was half it, was hours an, it was an hour. It was an hour. Yeah. Hour. It, okay. It was an hour. I had I had the earpiece and the IFB. Mm -hmm. I had uh, producer Gus Ramsey like give me Good old yeah give, give me instructions I did not yeah. know I, what nice. I was doing I we, was all really, we all know Gus we all know Gus is a good man he's a good man and he guided me through it because I remember in the middle of the or at the, the beginning of the first 15 minutes my IFB actually fell out and it was like oh, this no. kind of like and I was doing everything I can to to, to keep to keep chill and uh, and it like it literally had fallen out and uh, so I was just like nodding and so the camera was panning to Lindsay the whole time and I was just like and like Lindsay is like such a great like mama bear she's like everything's fine everything's just, good everything's and I, like, good. so I was like literally like like in a sweat and um, <laughs> and it, but it, it oddly loosened me up because then the second segment I just joked about how awful I was mm. and then it totally loosened me up and actually it, it ended up being it it just ended up being a blast well you have a, yeah. a background in improv and, and right, stand right. up and whatever I mean when I first started on Sports Center, I viewed it like it was stand-up comedy mixed with sports a little bit to my detriment because you know people are tuning in to find out <laughs> oh what happened you know <laughs> maybe they can be entertained as well at the same time but I, I think you revolutionize what i think sports journalism is because it, sports is entertainment and then you're also combining you know comedy with entertainment with sports to me that's kind of that's what the lexicon is today yeah. right i mean yeah. that, that that to me is you know that's and it, you know, it's so great so. just to see you doing that whole thing because well, thank you, you know and and um it's I'm, so hard i mean all i remember is just this it was so hard and it's i mean you're 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 really at the, to, to your point you're you're being a broadcaster you're conveying information first and foremost right. like you said no one i mean no one really cares what mr chow has to say about the NBA <laughs> you know <laughs> no one really cares so and I'm aware of that no. and and so you just kind of adding a cultural flavor flavor about it but but it really is the 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 star is the is the sport <laughs> but I'm here with Ken Jong here on the Rich Eisen show but I I would have however <laughs> if I was doing that and I'm thinking oh my gosh I'm screwing up I, I wouldn't have had like you do the uh grounding the foundation of well it can't be more I guess out there than jumping out of a trunk buck naked <laughs> yeah, yeah there's you know what i mean like yes. that that to me yeah. <laughs> can ground one when you're doing something that's a little bit out of the box right 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 when when, when you were doing that with the hangover when yep. that was first placed in front of you did you think i don't know if i can do this it was my idea <laughs> that's, that's how insane I am. Now, and hold on just a second. Yeah, it was my What idea. do you mean it was your idea? Uh, it's a, uh, Todd Phillips, who wrote and directed the movie. Yeah. Um, it was in, in, the middle of the, in the middle of the movie, it has Mr. Chow jump out, naked, oh, jump out with his shirt off and his, and his slacks on. Mm -hmm. and, then I'm a, and he also wrote and directed Old School. And I'm a, this is one of my favorite movies of all time. And, sure. and it was really inspired by really hacking off Will Ferrell, like streaking naked. It was really inspired by that and I, so I said well this is a Todd Phillips movie so I I gently pitched to Todd I was like what if Mr. Chow just jumped out naked mm -hmm. and he was like you don't have to tell me twice I mean he was like <laughs> he literally he knew the idea was so perfect that he made me sign he made me sign a clause like saying that I cannot change my mind <laughs> to do it. So, he got the lawyers involved. Yeah, he got the lawyer literally within half an hour. No joke. He sent Scott Budnick to like so, like his associate to for me to sign a paper. But I had I had already in my head I was like, well, I I, I, actually, I actually just felt for the good of the story. It's weird because in real life I'm not. You know, I'm not an exhibitionist. I don't like to take off my shirt at the beach. You know, I'm, I'm really like So I think when I'm in character or when, we, especially as Mr. Chow, you know, you're kind of, I mean, I hate when actors say that, but it's true. You're, you're a different guy. I'm just a different, yeah. you know, a different guy that just doesn't, that just doesn't care about anything. And in many ways, there's part of me that I wish I could be like elements of that character where 
like in real life, I'm very sensitive. I really care what everyone thinks. And then and, and, and I really do. I mean, I'm married with two kids. I always I'm very concerned about that. But as Chow, in, in many ways, is so cathartic because just Chow doesn't he doesn't care. Like, hey, he don't care. It's just he's just an idiot. <laughs> That's know? what I'm laughing about. Yeah. Not that it's so out of right. maybe the realm right. of possibility that you are a nice guy. I'm just <laughs> right. saying that, you know, wouldn't all of us want to have that Mr. Chow moment? I think we all want to have that Mr. Chow moment. And, and what, what I remember Todd and, and Bradley Cooper would say, especially in the first movie, they would always be surprised. It's like, I would say all these horribly politically incorrect things. <laughs> and then and then as soon as the, the camera was off, as soon as Todd yelled cut, I was like, you know, I'd like if I would say, hi, stupid, blah, 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 cut. Was, was, it, was, that, was, that, was that okay? <laughs> you, want me to, you want me to tone it down like a, a skosh? You want me to like, okay? Yeah, skosh like, is probably not in Mr. Yeah, Chow's Yeah, Chow doesn't say skosh. Ken Jeong says skosh all the time. <laughs> Ken Jeong lives on skosh, but <laughs> Chow has no idea. So it, it's very jarring to see me talk in my normal doctory voice, you know, in the Mr. Chow garden. And now you're doing that on on ABC, yeah. Right? Yeah. right? And um, and so you, but you do have an actual medical background and a yeah. degree. Like so, right now, if one of us passed out, if Law, my my, uh, if my I just beard, kick it. If he just if he just <laughs> has some sort of shortness of breath or something, you could. I actually... know a guy that could treat that. <laughs> yeah, you know, I think at this point, you know, I, I used to be a physician. Uh, I had an HMO here in LA, internal mm -hmm. medicine, like general practice. So so yeah, I. I General practitioners kind of know you know a little bit about everything. You're not good at any one thing, but but you know Duke little, Duke undergrad, Duke North undergrad. Carolina medical North, degree. Yeah, but a Duke fan. Any, any Duke fan. There? I'm not. I, I'm not even gonna okay. be diplomatic about it. I I was a I was like a, one of the early Cameron crazies. Did I you was, paint your face? Did you do? That? I did not paint my face, but I was very. Uh, I mean, I went to all the. I mean, freshman year. Who was there year, when you were there? I well, uh, Rick Fox was there. Well, it at, was at UNC, like, but who was at oh, Duke? When at you Duke, were there? it was. Um, uh, Christian Leitner was there. Oh. Bobby Hurley. It so was, you were there for. I the, was there. there. You I was were there. there. I had graduated right before they won their 91, 92 championships. Then I okay. went to Carolina Med School. But while I was at Carolina Med School, I w I had a dark blue Mustang. I wore Duke paraphernalia everywhere, <laughs> and I, we would have to park at the Dean Dome to go to med school <laughs> at UNC. And I was just so, I was really obnoxious. You were an outlier. I was an outlier, and I was proud of it and I'm, I'm more I'm much more chill now I have a bunch of Carolina friends but I at that time I was hardcore Ken Jong here on the Rich Eisen <laughs> show so you're an NBA guy so you're yeah. a hoops guy pretty much hoops guy pretty much we, yeah. we, we saw I mean your 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 Instagram your Twitter is just littered for the lack of a better phrase with pictures of you uh, and a bunch of oh, yeah. uh, NBA go. players. There you are being carried by Matt Barnes and DeAndre yeah. Jordan in a blue suit. Yeah, and you, we're, you going to chill. we're just going to Chili's for a brunch. Yeah, we're just hanging out. <laughs> um, but um, no, they, I think that was at a, a Hangover premiere. But it, I'm I'm just a big NBA fan, and, and I've gotten to go to some Clipper games. And, and uh, I don't know, I, I, I think growing up in North Carolina, growing up with mm -hmm. basketball, it's just kind of in, in my blood. So I'm... Um, you know, I'm just kind of a, just a, a NBA junkie for some reason. I don't even know why. I don't even play. So you, so, you don't even have a game? You I don't just... even have a game. No, I used to play as a kid, but I, I don't even play now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't, I don't know why. It's just like a, it's just like an outlet. It's just, uh, I don't know. I grew up, I just grew up on hoops, and I grew up loving Michael Jordan, and then that transferred my life because even though I went to Duke when I was a kid, I was a big Carolina fan. I loved Michael Jordan, and then. That and I would follow his career, and then from that on moment, I love Phil Jackson. I read Sacred Hoops, which to this day is still like probably my favorite book. Mm -hmm. Is Sacred Hoops because it's just the Zen Buddhism and or, and then relating that to basketball and to life. It's just um, oh, it's very applicable. So sure. And yeah. Steph Curry didn't even go to UNC, right? Duke or <laughs> NC State. Davidson. Just right? crazy. Davidson. They basically is, looked at him and said, hey, where you don't have a place here. And Davidson. I think that's that's to why his appeal is so immense, because he he appeals to every underdog in life. You know, I mean, I mean, I think people watch him and say, wow, if he can do it, I can do it. Although I don't know if that's necessarily the case, because he is so he has this God given talent to shoot from anywhere You know that he has innate talent. Right. Like and, and he's an incredible passer. I mean, people talk about his shooting, but. No one really talks about how amazing his ball handling and his passing skills are, which is, I mean, he just controls. He's just all tempo. He's you know? incredible. And then yeah. the, the show that he puts on before the game, too, where he's 
dribbling with both hands. I've never seen a lot. Oh, my goodness. He's shooting in from the tunnel. He takes a shot from about 50 feet away. It it really is great. Before I let you go, let's talk about, uh, let's talk Dr. Ken. Yes, yes. I mean, uh, are you enjoying this? It seems like it's a... It's, a bit of a departure from some of the things that you've done. Yeah, in your it's, a, it's, a, it's a definitely a departure from what I'm known for. As an but, actor, obviously, yeah, as, as a an comedian, actor. because this is yeah, it's what it's like a do. yeah, it's a full circle moment for me because it's it's it, I help co-create the show. I'm one of the writers and and executive producers on mm-hmm. the show. So this is the first project I've ever been involved in where I'm, I'm just actively involved in mm-hmm. everything. And you know, usually as an actor, you know, you're the last one hired. And, and you get all the glory of it, but like in Hangover, I was, you know, all the script had been written, the every, the settings had been, you know, taken care of. But on this one, I was involved in every aspect of the pilot and, and to this day, I'm, I'm involved in every aspect of the show. And it's, it's so much, it's being like a player coach kind of and, and a GM like all that. at once, you yeah, know, and, and, and it's a big responsibility. And, and I really have to, if anything, I just think of the show first. It's like, it's like in team sports. Maybe that's why I like basketball so much. It's like, you're thinking about team first and like in like Phil Jackson always says like five fingers to a hand, you know, mm-hmm. and that's and, and that's I come from ensemble comedy. I don't come from really like kind of star driven. I've been a supporting actor to this day all my life. You know, that's that's who I am. And so I have that mentality on my show where I just think about the show. I don't think about I don't think about my own profile or, oh, I I'm not the kind of actor that, you know, how many lines do I have every episode? Sure. You know, it's, it's really about, I just want a good show. It doesn't matter if I'm in it or not. And and I think it's, it's you know, in, in many ways, it's like there there is this kind of team sports basketball mentality that I have to my own show. Well, it's Dr. Ken. It's on ABC. It's on Friday nights. It's season two, and it's on 830 Eastern on ABC. Uh, come back next time. Bring of your course. prescription pad that I'm told you have. Yes, I because, will. Because uh, Mike Del Tufo over there keeps muttering he's out of blue pills. Oh, and, oh no and I problem. I don't know what he means by that. Can <laughs> no you problem. help with that? It's sure. a leave, right? A leave. <laughs> yeah, just a leave. Right? <laughs> yes, in right? air quotes, a leave. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, all day long, all day strong. strong. There you go. That's right. <laughs> Thanks for coming on, Ken. Thank you You're for having me. You're the best. We're really big fans of yours. Thank here. you. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.